Good morning, church. You are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. We are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Three things. Let us remain in focus. Love God. Love people. Love life. And you are saying that life is getting tougher and tougher. You know, as we look around us, it seems that there's no like at the end of the tunnel, as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Still, we need to choose these three things. Love God, love people, love life. And how do we go about to do it and to sustain you know, our energy to love God, love people, love life? Today's lessons will give us the basis. It's called wisdom of God. When you have the wisdom of God, when you acquire the wisdom of God, Today's lesson, as we begin to study the topic concerning wisdom that is found in the book of James, the wisdom that is from above and that is from God will give us that strength, will give us that impetus to help us to move forward by focusing love God, love people, love life. Amen. Let us turn our attention to the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 1 onwards. James, a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produced patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Verse 9, Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat that he withers the grass, its flowers falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Verse 12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, 
he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of the first fruits of his creatures. Verse 19, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, completely forgets what kind of a man he was. But when he looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their troubles and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for us, hallelujah, collectively as a church and even as, Lord, the army of God, Lord, in the kingdom of God. For us to move forward, Lord, during this pandemic, we need your wisdom for us to live our Christian life, Lord, to the fullest so that we are able to glorify and magnify your name and we need your wisdom. And Lord, in every aspect, Lord, you have pointed out to us that we are, Lord, uh, amen, to honour you, to put you first, Lord, to put the needs of others first, hallelujah, and most of all, to be separated from the systems of the world, hallelujah, of this world. And Lord, we ask that you will release your word Lord, under the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, let your word go forth to accomplish that which you desire. Lord, to raise an army. Lord, that they know how to do great exploit and to march forward, Lord, to honour the name of the Lord and to expand the kingdom of God during this pandemic time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This book is very interesting. The book of James, chapter 1. It starts with the name James. Obviously, we know that he's one of the apostles, a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He called himself a born servant. Verse 1, and then second half of verse 1, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. That means to all the Jewish believers, okay? To all those who claim themselves to be a follower of Jesus, a disciples of the Lord. But listen, so many times we read the book of James, so many times when we slowly meditate the book of James. Somehow it's like the value that is written in the book of James, it's pretty alien. And it's like we are not able to quickly get into the format, you know, to get into the system, to get into the thinking pattern of James. Why? Because he's not written for any church goer. Because the book of James is not written for anyone that is pro-Christianity only. Because the book of James is not written for anyone, you know, and that they just want to do casual reading about Holy Scripture. It is actually from a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus, from a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus, to the rest of the born servant of God, to the rest of the slave of God, hallelujah, of the Lord Jesus at large. If you and I, we consider ourselves a servant of the Lord, 
and a born servant of the Lord and a slave of God, then everything will just fall into the right place. Then we will begin to understand, you know, that what James is talking about in the book of James chapter 1. Okay, having said that, let me just explain a little about when James says he is a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 12 to verse 18, here there's a picture concerning a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman that has been a slave or a servant, okay? And then what happened subsequently when he completed his term of service as a servant or as a slave? Verse 12, If your brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year you shall let him go free from you. Remember the word jubilee? Remember the seventh year? You know, it's a sabbatical year. And so, when you send him away free from you, you shall not let him go away empty-handed. You shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, from your wine press, from what the Lord your God has blessed you with. You shall give to him. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. And if it happens that he says to you, I will not go away from you because he loves you and your house and since he prosper with you, then you shall take an all and trust it through his ears to the door. He shall be your servant forever. Also to your female servant, you shall do likewise. It shall not seem hard to you that you send him away free from you. For he has been worth a double hired servant in serving you six years. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. So it is in this context that James is saying that he has redeemed me, you know, from sin. I want to serve him for the rest of my life. I want to be his servant. So James is talking about, I'm not just a churchgoer. I'm not just a Christian, you know, that come to church. I'm not just a religious person, but my life, I owe it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And my attitude is I am his slave. My attitude is I am his servant. My attitude is I am his born servant. Therefore, I'm getting ready to hear what he has got to say. So he is speaking to the 12 tribes, those who are born again, those who consider themselves as born servant. They are ready to hear what God has got to tell them about what is ahead of them. Now, it's interesting to note that it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Various trial and various testing. Church, are we not going through various trial and various testing? And when will this end? When come to this pandemic, you know, it has been said that it's no longer called a pandemic. It's called an epidemic. But whether it is a pandemic or epidemic, still, we find that it is quite challenging. You know, thank God that the number in Penang has gone down. But that doesn't mean to say that the worst is behind us. We still know that there are people who succumb to the fatality people who still succumb to the attack of COVID-19 and sudden death, you know. And so, it is really a trial and testing for everyone, for the students to go back to school or not to go back to school. For those who are the hawkers and all that, do they carry on with the business or not, you know, opening the store. And then there are some others, they run their small, medium business, stores or shops, you know. We have seen so many close down. And then they are going into some very challenging time financially. It is truly a trial and a testing that touched all aspects, from the student to the hawkers to the businessmen and even to the developers, you know. And those are big time businessmen. Uh, so the Bible tells us even we as Christians, we are part of the society. We are going through this various trial. What shall we do? The Bible assures us, keep our faith because the testing of our faith produces patience. And let patience have its perfect work that you may be 
perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Meaning to say, have this perspective. There is a beginning, there is an ending when it comes to the trial. But to go through it, be patient. You know, be full of long-suffering. And just go through the entire period of this trial. It's not going to be easy. But the Bible promised us that when we go through this trial and let patience do its work in us, and then you will find that when the patient has completed its process of dealing with us, then we will be lack of nothing and be ready for anything that is for the next phase in life. And I find that this is very true. You know, in the past, I've gone through some of the trial and the testing. I thought I'm going to die. I thought I'm going to collapse. But strange enough, by the grace of God, He sustained me. When I came out of that process of trial and testing, it has made me stronger. And I was ready for the next phase of trial. It seems that there is not going to be no trial at all. Let me just maybe share a little bit about my own example. When I was in Bible school, it was really challenging to pastor a church during the weekend and to study during the weekdays. Because in between, we have to not only hand up assignment, but at the same time, if there are pastoral call uh, members who are sick or they are in trouble, we have to travel to our outreach and to solve their problem and to you know, meet up with them. And then we have to drive all the way back to the Bible school. Still, we have to do our assignment. There's no such thing as we tell the lecturer next day that, sorry, yesterday I gone back to my outreach and I don't have time to finish our assignment. No way. You know, where school is concerned, the number one priority is you must finish your assignment. But when it comes to ministry is concerned, we know that it is expected of us that we cannot say, because I'm studying, I cannot come to meet you, I cannot come to pray for you, I cannot visit you in the hospital. No such thing, you know. So we understand that sometimes we are very hard-pressed. Hard-pressed for time, hard-pressed for deadline. But still, by the grace of God, we go through it. And when we came out of it, when we graduated, we become a stronger person. We no longer make excuses when we come to deadline. We must somehow learn to deliver, even though we are under pressure. That got us ready, and that got me ready when I pastored a church full-time in Sri Kambangan. Now it's part of Putrajaya. And uh, it was not easy as well. I became a stronger person. I went there as a Bible school student, but I graduated, I returned as a full-fledged pastor. They're able to minister to them, not during when I was in Bible school. But now that I'm out of Bible school, I'm able to give them my full attention as well as my 24 hours to help the church to grow. And I went through quite a fair bit as well when I was in that church in Sri Kambangan for seven years. You know, some of the trial and some of the testing, they are unimaginable. I don't have time to share with you, but by the time when I left the church seven years later, I was again a stronger person in the aspect of experiencing the faithfulness of God, the trial and testing, especially when it comes to paying installment for assets. You know, I see how God helped us to pay up our installment for van. I see how God helped us to pay up concerning installations of aircon for the church setting. I see how we move from a small premise to a shop lot and we have the aircon and couple the place and buy new chairs. I see how the faithfulness of God, even though it was very tough that have to go and sell Christmas card door to door, was able to raise about 10,000. That was way back in the early 80s, you know, to renovate the church and then it grew to be where it was then about 100 over slightly. So when I answered the call of God in Penang First Assembly of God, 1986, I believe, and when I came over, I was faced with bigger problems, you know, bigger challenges in many ways, but I was ready. Thank God, with the help of the previous experience I had in Bible school, as well as the outreach in this Sri Kambangan, I was ready for the challenges. Hallelujah. Even though I was not 100% ready, but I've seen how God being faithful 
in Bible school and in the days of Sri Kembangan. And so I was able to trust the Lord to take me through in the early days of the Memphis Assembly of God in the 80s when I took over as a pastor. So indeed, what the scriptures say is true, that knowing that the testing of your faith produced patience, and let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Meaning to say, you are ready. Hallelujah. You know, God has used those situations and ready for the bigger challenge. It's just like King David said, you know, you know God helps me to overcome lion and bear. And then, Goliath. God helped me to handle bare hand, with his bare hand, the lion. The lion is not as huge as the bear. The bear can stand up about seven foot, you know, or ten foot tall, right? But it starts with the lion, then the bear, and then Goliath. So the same thing, God allowed me to go through all that so that he got me ready. But as I go through all this trial and testing, I realize this one thing. I was accumulating not just experience, but spiritual wisdom, spiritual perception, spiritual understanding. It is more than just what a friend we have in Jesus, like the song that it says. But also, I was learning the truth about great is His faithfulness, like what the hymn says. And so going through this pandemic, what is it ahead of us? I don't know. But I know I need one thing to sustain me in loving God, love people and love life and to continue to grow, to continue to glow, to continue to be in the forefront serving God, I need His wisdom. So verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Many of you going through this pandemic, you're asking this question, Why? What? Who? Where? When? How? Isn't it? We want to have an answer to all this. But God's Word is telling us, all these questions, they are relevant. But to sum it all, that which is able to lead you step by step and to face this situation called COVID-19 and the challenge that comes with it, okay, whether it's financial issue or health issue or social issue or the uncertainty of future, wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. You know, look to God for wisdom. Begin to seek His wisdom instead of asking open-ended questions like why, what, who, where, when, how. Ask, Lord, what is your wisdom? What is it that you want to tell me? Now, in verse 6, it says that, Be careful. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. And let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all his way. So the scripture explain and tell us very clearly, James is saying to all the bond servants, all those you know, who desire to obey God, to follow God, he says that, ask in faith. Simple as that. When you don't ask in faith, then you're in doubt. And when you're in doubt, you're like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And you will not receive anything from the Lord. God will never make that mistake. He will always answer our prayer. Many a times it is we who are in doubt and we end up receiving nothing. We need to search our heart constantly. Why am I not receiving anything from the Lord? And especially when I ask for wisdom, how come there is no impartation of wisdom, there is no indications, there is no leading, there is no signaling, there is no, like God is telling me what to do. Perhaps we have asked in doubt. You know, we need to ask wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom from above. Now, as we look around us, we recognize that the rich is going through this pandemic. The poor also is going through this pandemic. Whether you are rich or you are poor, you are not spare. But the Bible tells us this one thing. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. What does that mean? The poor going through this pandemic, 
Their resources may be limited, but take it if your resources are limited. Let it be a time of trusting God that God will exalt you. What about those who are rich and they have a lot of resources to go through this pandemic? The Bible says that the rich, you know, glory in his humiliation. Learn to humble yourself and learn to recognize that, you know, it is God who has given you and entrusted you all these riches and resources and that you can be a blessing to the people around you. Don't use your wealth as well as your resource to elevate yourself. But rather, the scripture tells us this one thing, you know, for no sooner has the sun risen with the burning heat that it withers the grass. Its flowers fall and its beautiful appearance perish. So the rich also will fade away in his pursuit. But rather, in humiliation, recognize that it is God who has given you the power to create wealth. Use your wealth with humility to bless the people around you, especially those people who are in need. Let us share with them, you know, freely, sincerely to reach out to them. Hallelujah. So the rich and the poor, the Bible says, there will always be people who are rich and people who are poor. The book of Proverbs tells us this, 22 to verse 2. Have this wisdom. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Now that speaks everything about what James chapter 1, verse 9 and verse 10, about the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. It says, the Lord is the maker of them all. Let not the poor despise themselves. The Lord is your maker. Let not the rich exalt themselves, because the Lord is the maker of them all. You see, there will always be the rich and the poor, but rather, let the poor exalt the Lord. Amen. Trust the Lord to raise him up. Let the rich humble himself and trust that God will continue to bless him with the wealth to help the people around. But God is still the maker of them all. Hallelujah. You know, then the Bible do tell us this one thing, that the wisdom that God gave us is what we are going through now, it will impact what we will be in eternity. Verse 12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Praise God. The Bible tells us that when we go through this temptation, this trial, this testing, if we are steadfast and our conduct the way we live our life, or we go through temptation, you know, it is a proof of the Lord. Like the Lord Jesus, when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness, all his answer and all his conduct and all his conversation, all his response was approved by the Lord. Okay? So the Bible tells us this one thing, that when we are approved by the Lord, there is a crown of life. God promised to those who love him. In fact, there are more than just one crown of life. There are all together five crowns all together. Let me just quickly read to you or bring to your attention the five crowns. Okay, the first one is the incorruptible crown, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to verse 25. This is also called the imperishable crown. This crown is given to the believers who faithfully run the race who crucify every selfish desire in the flesh and point men to Jesus. Next, the crown of rejoicing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, 20, and Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. To those who faithfully are witnesses to the saving grace of God and lead souls to Jesus. This crown also has been called the soul winner's crown. Thirdly, the crown of life which we read just now. James chapter 1, verse 12, For those believers who endure trial and tribulations, severe suffering, even unto death. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 11, this crown is also referred to as the martyr's crown. Number 4, the crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, to those who love the appearing of Christ. 
anxiously wait and look forward to the day when he will return for his saints. This crown is given to those who have lived a good and righteous life for God while living down here on earth. The fifth crown is the crown of glory. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 4. This is the pastor's crown and will be given to the minister who faithfully feed the flock of God. This probably could also include preachers, teachers, Sunday school teachers, missionaries, and all those who teach the word of God in their respective ministry. So, at the end of the trial and testing, you know, and when we are approved by God, the Bible says that there are crowns awaiting for us. Now, what do we do with this crown? What is the purpose? Revelations chapter 4 verse 10 tells us, when we have the crown, at the end of the day, it is this. Like the book of Colossians, it says that all things are created by Him and for Him. Revelations chapter 4 verse 10 tells us, The four and twenty elders fell down before Him and sat on the throne, and worshipped Him that liveth forever and ever, and cast the crown before the throne, saying, Lord, you are worthy. The Lamb of God is worthy. What will we be able to bring to our Lord when we see Him face to face? It will be, these are the crown, the incorruptible crown, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of life, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory. It is in exchange with the way we live our life through tears, through determinations, through suffering, and even love not our lives unto death. And then God reward us with that crown. When we see Him face to face, it will not be we who give Him our trophy, our accolade, our bouquet of flowers, a diamond ring, a watch, you know, assets, house, property, power, positions, all this, God doesn't need it at all. But it is the crown that He gave us. But we, in turn, return back to Him. And we are saying, Lord, we are not worthy. It is by Your grace that we go through all the trial, the testing, you know, all the persecution. And sometimes, some of them, they even give up their life. Like right now in Afghanistan, there are so many Christians being persecuted and on the spot just because of their answer, yes or no. Yes for Jesus or no to the Taliban. And if it's no to the Taliban, that means on the spot, you die. They die for their faith. They die as a martyr. But it is not going to be no avail wasted because God is watching all this. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us this, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So when we go through all this, it either brings out the best in us or it brings out the worst in us. Trial and testing either bring out the best in us or the worst in us. Bring out the best in us because inside we've been purified. The grace of God is working and multiplying and then cause us to love Him with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength and love our neighbour as ourselves. and at no cost. That means to say that we are willing to lay it down for Him or rather our heart is not pure. The reason why we are tempted and we fall is because decay has already set in and shortcoming is already found there. Mistake has already found there. It says, verse 15, Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Verse 16, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Comes from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he bring us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of a first fruits of His creature. The Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of lights. God will not be double-minded or change His mind. Okay? He has put the word of truth inside us, hallelujah, and caused us to be born again. And we become like a kind of a first fruit of His creation, His prized possessions. You know, all that God has created, He brings forth by His Word. In the beginning, the Bible tells us that was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is referring to Jesus Christ, okay? 
And Genesis tells us that by his spoken word, let there be light and there is light. Okay? And so God created the world by his word. And God also created us. Hallelujah. Amen. Brought us forth by the word of truth. But of all God's creation, we are a kind of his first fruits of his creature. And we are his prized possession. And so God look at you and he's very proud of you. And he believed that you can go through that trial, that testing. And he is anytime ready to put that crown on you. Hallelujah. Whether it's incorruptible crown, crown of rejoicing, crown of light, crown of righteousness, or crown of glory. Now, James says, listen, I am a born servant of the Lord. I find these three things that are very, very helpful. It is truly wisdom from God, from above. And I would like to impart to you. Listen to this while you are going through trial and testing. This is what James the Apostle says in verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, listen. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Wow. I like the NIV version. It says that let every man be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. You know, the opposite, it's most of our characteristic. We are slow to listen. We are quick to speak. We are quick to get angry. Isn't it so? Huh? So that's how we act as though like we don't have the wisdom of God. So we get ourselves in trouble most of the time with the people around us. We get ourselves into all kinds of situations because, again, we don't have this piece of wisdom. And when we go through pandemic, it brings out the worst in us. Because we keep saying things that we shouldn't say and we keep offending people that we should not offend or create a situation that we should not have created. We regret it. So what is the remedy? We are crying out. What happened to me? How can I go through this pandemic in a very patient and at the same time full of perseverance and at the same time able to glorify God? Do these three things, church. Hallelujah. Quick to listen. Slow to speak, slow to get angry. Verse 20 explains everything. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Most believers, most born servants of the Lord, we want to produce the righteousness of God. In other words, Christ-likeness. We want people to see Jesus in us as much as possible. You know, we don't want to cause any shame to the name of Jesus. And the Bible tells us, well, in that case, realize this one thing, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. If you constantly allow the anger to surface, some of us, we are not hot tempo. You are quick tempo, meaning to say short few, a little bit, a little bit angry, a little bit, you know, and very quickly, you say things that, like a sharp dagger, it hurts others. So the Bible tells us this one thing. The wisdom that we need when we go through trial and testing is this. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. But I like the NIV version. Therefore, I will recite to you in the NIV version. Quick to listen, slow to speak slow to become angry why because the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of god but you say i already say sorry why say sorry means already over but the damage is already done every one of us rich or poor we are going through this pandemic and it's very very tough but to make things a little bit easier for the people around us and to let others see the kingdom of God is advancing in each one of us and in our family, let us do this one thing, practice this little bit of wisdom. It may be a little bit, but actually it has got a great truth in it. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you know that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God? Like the case of Cain and Abel. The Bible says that God rejected Cain's sacrifice. 
but God accepted Abel's sacrifice. Cain became very angry with Abel. But it's not Abel's fault. Abel offered, you know, the animal with the shedding of blood, whereas Cain offered the agricultural produce that has got no shedding of blood. So his sacrifice, worship was rejected, but he became very angry with Abel. And in the end, he murdered Abel. And he justified it by his anger. And that's what happened. So I pray that all of us, while God is allowing the rich and the poor, the extraordinary and the ordinary, okay, the famous and the unknown, all of us universally going through this pandemic, both groups, rich or poor, okay, the Bible tells us, quick to listen, slow to speak, and then slow to become angry. Then the fourth bit of wisdom that James wants to impart to us is this. He says that, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. The implanted word, planted inside us, is able to save our soul. Only the word of God is able to save our soul. So many, we acted like we are audience. We love to hear testimony. And we keep passing testimony around and we survive by testimony. You know what I'm talking about? The testimony of this person, the testimony about that person. But it is not the testimony. The testimony about people should motivate us. But it is the word, the Bible, the scripture verse. If ever you want to glorify, glorify the scripture verse and not glorify human being. But we tend to want to glorify experiences in human beings. But the Bible tells us that, you know, it is the implanted word able to save our souls. I know, I've been a young Christian before. I know, I've been a growing young Christian before. Love to hear testimony. In fact, the services I attended used to have at least about three to four to five testimony before the preaching of the word. Sometimes excessively, it can be seven to eight to nine to ten. But testimony, it's out of excitement, people share. But the word of God is able to save our soul. You know, receive with meekness. That means willingness to come before God and His word and bow before Him and His word and receive His word with meekness. Receive with meekness means very soft, very pliable and very willing to learn, to accept what the sovereign God has to say about your situation. So, and when you receive the word of God with meekness that is in the implanted word, the Bible tells us that able to save your soul, be a doer of the words, not just hearers only. That is called deception. When we only want to hear, that's what happened to many churchgoers. Okay? They come to church, they get very excited to hear about so and so, you know, because they pray in Jesus' name and suddenly there's this pieces that come by, then they earn 500000 So-and-so pray in the name of Jesus and then something wonderful happened, able to buy a new house. All these are testimony. There is nothing wrong. But the Bible tells us if you only listen to testimony and then you get very excited and you neglected the word, you're only deceiving yourself. Okay? You've got to be the doer of the words, not hearers only deceiving yourself. That's what the scripture said. Not people who deceive you. You deceive yourself. You shortchange yourself. How do you shortchange yourself? Verse 23, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away immediately, forget what kind of a person he was because the word able to reveal to you what kind of a person you are. What kind of a person you are. Ask your friend, your best friend. I tell you, your best friend will be able to tell you only 15%. The other 85%, he has or she has got reservation for fear of offending you. And why should he or she offend you? Most of us, we want to hear compliment. We don't want to hear the truth. But the Bible will never tell us only compliment. But the Bible will also tell us concerning the truth. The Bible will not be afraid to offend us. Hallelujah. You want to know who you are? Check the word. 
reject the word. The word will be able to tell you concerning who you are. Listen, the word not only tells us who we are like a mirror, the word will never lie to us. But the Bible tells us the word is able to liberate us and give us the liberty. Hallelujah. And continue to live in that liberty and freedom. Liberty from sin. Liberty from deception. Liberty from falsehood. Verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the Bible is called the law of liberty, and continue in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. The Bible says that this one will be blessed in what he does. Ah, it is not because sometimes, eh, so many times I've observed people come forward, they must let the senior pastor pray for them. And then they find that I receive blessing. Uh, other pastors already prayed for you, but they still want to line up and come before the senior pastor must lay hand. Or after the pastor has prayed, the senior pastor has prayed, since we've got a special speaker, we must ask the special speaker to lay hand and pray so that everything I do, I'll be blessed. We bring in idolatry. We bring in the worship that is in the temple. You know, people believe that if they receive a bit of prayer, they will be blessed. The Bible tells us that if you are the doer of the word and if you have received the perfect law of liberty, you continue to practice it and then be a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does, which is in line with Psalm chapter 1. What does that Psalm chapter 1 tell us? Why not? Uh, Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit with the seed of the scornful, nor stand in the way of the sinners. And day and night he delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law, you know, and then he is like a tree planted beside the water. Hallelujah. And he will bring forth his fruit in its season. Amen. His life will be fruitful. Amen. Able to glorify God. Hallelujah. And he will be blessed in all that he does. The acid test concerning do we have the wisdom? Are we living out that wisdom? Is that this wisdom from above fill our mind, fill our heart, fill our soul? The acid test is found in verse 26 and verse 27. To begin with, if anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this one's religion is what? Useless. If you have the wisdom of God in your life and in your heart and in your mind, you must know how to control your tongue. Some people say, I just cannot control my tongue. Then you are deceiving yourself. You claim that you are a spiritual person. You are actually not. Okay? And everything that you believe in, you know, is useless. Not Christianity is useless. Not the Bible is useless but your own set of value, you know, your own set of belief is useless. It's not helping you because you're not able to bridle your tongue. So mind your tongue. Proverbs tell us this one thing, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Therefore, you and I, we need to be careful. Start from today. Ask God to help you to control your tongue, that you will speak life and don't keep Confessing, you know, negative. Die, finish. I'm a failure. I'm going through this pandemic. I'm not going anywhere. And the more you speak negatively, somehow you will eat the fruits there. Don't speak negatively about yourself, neither about the people that you associate with, whether it's your wife, your family members, you know, or people that you work with in the bigger environment, the factory, the business circle. By and large, it says the acid test is, if you have the wisdom of God, you will breathe out, you will control your tongue. I think the thumb rule is the best thing is what? You know, if you have got nothing good to say, then don't say at all. And back to verse 19. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. James chapter 1, verse 19. The second acid test 
that we have already received the wisdom of God is this. You will want to look after the people around you. The Bible gives us two examples. Orphans, more often than not, they are helpless without father and mother. And widows, because those times, the widows, they don't work. There is no work opportunity for them. They depend on their husband to bring back bread, butter, food, you know. And today, of course, we know that the single mother, that they need help. We can still reach out to them. Amen. The widows as well as the single mother, okay. And then, the third thing is has about your attitude towards the world is trying to mold you. The world is trying to press on you, change you, transform you, and then make something out of you which will contradict the plan and the purpose of God. The world would like to make you to become a compromised churchgoer, not a bond servant and a slave. The scripture tells us here, in conclusion, verse 27, it says that to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Can we go through this pandemic, this trial, this testing, and without being spotted? The answer is what? Yes. If you have the wisdom of God inside you, if you have got the word implanted, the Bible says the word is able to save your soul. And if you have got the word of truth inside you, the word of truth is able to bring forth that first fruits, hallelujah, in your life, and you will continue to be his prized possessions. Hallelujah. Shall we bow our head and pray? Father, we thank you for this time of listening to your word. It is so refreshing. Yes, the book of James, Lord, impart to us that when we go through this pandemic, this trial, this testing, we can still live for your glory. Hallelujah. And that, Lord, out of this trial, this testing, Lord, you will help us to be able to be perfect and complete. Let patient do his work so that we'll be lack of nothing and be ready, hallelujah, to serve you. Amen. And help us, Lord, when we are encountering all kinds of situations, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because at the end of the day, we know that our anger does not work out the righteousness of God. Most of all, help us to be the doer of the word. And finally, help us, Lord, to bridle our tongue, help those who are in need, especially the orphans and the widows, and then help us to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. I pray, Father, for your protection to be upon every single one. Hallelujah. They are coming in, they are going out. I pray, Father, that the blood of Jesus cover every believer from Penang first and the people around. Hallelujah. As well as those Christians who is worshipping together with us through this uh, social media recorded service. I pray, Father, that we will meditate James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Throughout this week, every day read James chapter 1 five times and going through it over and over and over and over and over again. And let, Lord, the book of James inspire us to receive wisdom from you and that we may live, Lord, victoriously going through this pandemic. I plead the blood of Jesus cover every single one, not only for protection, but also victory over the enemies. Lord, the devil come to kill, to steal, to destroy. But I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus and through the blood of Jesus, May you protect your people, young and old, Lord, all together. Oh God, Jesus, you are our Noah's ark. When we run into that ark, that spiritual ark, the Lord Jesus, we are saved, spirit, soul, and body. So I plead the blood of Jesus truly cover the entire household of faith of Penangfest, whether it is English service, Mandarin service, Hokkien service, Nepalese service. And Lord, we know that you have listened to our prayer and you have already answered our prayer. Thank you, Father, for another great week that is ahead of us. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for your protection to be upon the, the state of Penang as well. Even as many, many visitors, they come to visit us. Lord, may you 
bless them with good health and grant them good time. And watch over all, Lord, the business entity as well as all, Lord, the entire Penang. I also pray, Father, for our Chief Minister together with his Cabinet members. Grant them good health, grant them protection, grant them wisdom and grant them favour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.